Hello, welcome to Willow Hill and everyone joining us for worship today. We are so excited to celebrate and worship with you on this Christmas Eve. We have a wonderful service plan which includes lessons and carols, a small talk message from Miss Gina, and Pastor Nicole's message, Everything is Different. If you are new to Willow Hill, welcome. We're so glad you're here and we would love a chance to get to know you. So please consider filling out the digital connection card linked in the video's description. If you'd like to get to know Willow Hill a little bit more, you can check out our website, willowhill.org, or you can find us on social media through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll go ahead and link our website as well as our social media handles in the video's description. Throughout the course of the worship service, please feel free to like, comment, and let us know what you're thinking. We would love to hear from you. And if there's any way that we could be praying for you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can go ahead and put prayer requests in the digital connection card as well, and the staff can go ahead and pray alongside you. Now, without any further ado, let's enjoy our Christmas Eve service. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty and everlasting God, we have gathered to celebrate the birth of your son, the Christ child. We pause to recognize this great gift that you have given to us. Though it comes in the packaging of a tiny baby, we know that this gift means for us eternal salvation. We celebrate Jesus' birth, for in him you came close to us so that we might be close to you. Help us to continue to grow closer to you through the teachings of Jesus, guided by the work of the Holy Spirit. As we celebrate this evening, guide our focus and let it remain upon this holy miracle. Grant that his spirit may be born anew in our hearts this evening and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us now and always. Amen. During the season of Advent, we took part in several different mission projects in hopes that we might share Christ's love and the Christmas spirit with people in our community and throughout the world. And tonight we have the opportunity to continue that work because when we give to the mission and ministry that Willow Hill is engaging in and that Jesus is leading us through, we are helping others to know the love of God. And so we thank you so much for your generosity and all the ways that you are making a difference.
the scriptures from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10, and I'm using the New International Version. The branch from Jesse. A shoe will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Today's scripture comes from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5a. This is the New International Version. It's entitled, A Promised Ruler from Bethlehem. Marshal your troops now, city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small, among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, from whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock, 
in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. The word of God to the people of God. Our reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who has said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. 
Then the angel left her. The word of God for the people of God. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David, 
he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her newborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. The scripture reading is from Luke 2, verses 8 through 20, the New International Version. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of God for the people of God. Hello friends, it is time for small talk on this Christmas Eve. I have a fun story to share with you of the whole Christmas story and it needs you to help. So every time we see big words in my storybook, it's called a very noisy Christmas. 
by Tim Thornborough. Every time you see big words, I want you to say them out loud with me, okay? Let's start. <clears throat> Shh. That's when you can say them with me, okay? It was a quiet, quiet night on the hillside. The shepherds and the sheep were sleeping. Then suddenly, ah, ah, an angel. The shepherds were so, so scared. But wait, the angel was saying something. You ready? Help me. Shh. Let's listen carefully, the angel said. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. God's rescuer has been born in Bethlehem. He is the king of the whole wide, wonderful world. You will find the baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Then suddenly, ready, read them with me. Glory to God, the king has been born. Peace on earth. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of angels were praising God at the top of their voices. Then suddenly, the angels went back to heaven and everything was quiet again. The shepherds hurried off to Bethlehem and they found Jesus in a manger, just like the angel had told them. Then shepherds wanted to tell everyone. Ready to help? Wake up, everybody. Something amazing has happened. Jesus, the rescuer, has been born. Good job. Meanwhile, in a land far, far away, some wise men were studying special books and watching the stars. Then suddenly, wow, look, what is it? A new star had appeared in the sky. They knew the star meant that a special king had been born. So they packed their bags and went on a long, 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 long trip to see the new king. Ready to help? Shh. When they arrived, they found Jesus and gave him special gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They bowed down before him. They knew he was the king of the whole wide world. Do you want to know something special? Jesus is God's son and our rescuer. He is the king of the whole wide wonderful world. Jesus came on the first Christmas so we can be friends with God forever. Now that's something worth singing and shouting about. Ready? One last time. All together. Joy to the world. Jesus is the king. Hooray! This is a special night, isn't it? It's a special night that we celebrate Jesus' birthday. Maybe at home, you and your family right now could sing happy birthday to Jesus. Wouldn't that be fun? Because after all, it is Jesus' birthday. Merry Christmas, everybody. Let's say our prayer together. Dear God, Thank you for Christmas, and especially Jesus. Please help us remember to be loving and kind at Christmas and always. Amen. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we pray that you would open our ears that we might hear your still small voice. Speak to us, God. We are listening. Amen. Have you ever had an experience that changed your life forever? 
On May 4th, 2009, at 10.06 a.m., my life changed forever when I became a mom and welcomed Aubrey Jo into the world. My life was forever changed. It is a moment marked in time for me because everything was different after that moment. You've had moments like this in your life, whether it was welcoming a child or getting married or graduating from school, maybe losing a loved one, making a big life decision. There are these moments in our life when, when as they happen, we know that everything is going to be different from then on out. Tonight we've heard a beautiful story, one for the ages, and one that we hear and rehear every year. A beautiful story that has been in the works for thousands of years that had finally come to fruition. A story of Mary and Joseph, of prophets and angels and shepherds, and of a tiny newborn baby being welcomed into the world. Oh, how I love this story. It's one that is burned into my memory. I'm sure it is with many of you as well. When I was in college, I decided to take a classical Greek class. It was a lot of work, but I really enjoyed learning an ancient language. Well, a few semesters into learning, uh, we were still like focusing a lot on vocabulary and declining nouns and verbs and kind of the basics of the language. And leading up to the final, I had made a million and a half vocabulary cards, locked myself in a study room at the library to prepare. I was so nervous. Well, as I made my way through that final, I, I wasn't feeling great about it, about the translation and the grammar, but I kept at it. And I, I got to the last page, and there was this big passage of Greek. And my eyes grew wide, and I just kind of froze. There was no way I was going to be able to translate that. But at the top of the page, my professor had written, this is for extra credit. A little harder than what you have been used to translating, but give it a try. Here's a hint. It has to do with the season. Now, this was in December. And so I started to try to make my way through this passage. And I was working on the first line. And I saw it was, there was a mention of shepherds and, and of fields and, and a flock. And I just kind of kept at it. And, and then I realized what that first line said. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. I could not believe it. It was a passage from Luke chapter 2, a passage of scripture that I had heard over and over in my life. I had it practically memorized. And so I absolutely crushed that bonus section of that final. Thank you, Jesus, for bonus points. <laughs> we know this story, right? We know it well. We've heard it before. We have it practically memorized. You know, sometimes pastors find themselves with extra pressure at this time of year, especially on Christmas Eve, trying to find a new and fresh way to tell this story that has been told again and again for millennia. And I found myself in that spot as I was preparing this message. Every thought that I had just seemed feeble and inadequate. How could anything that I say hold up to the greatness of this story? So I decided to check a trusty commentary. Surely there was some brilliance within it, right? Surely a theologian or two would have something fantastic to share with me. But you know what I found? Something quite surprising, actually. The author was talking about where Jesus was born, in a stable with a, um, a feeding trough as his bed, and he went on to write this. And then Jesus is born. There is no miracle, no unusual incident. And I read that, and I was taken aback. I kind of stared at it. I read it again, and I thought, what? What do you mean no miracle? What do you mean no unusual incident? This is not true, I thought. 
Now, I get what the author was trying to get at. He was trying to say that there was no supernatural golden beam of light that shone down on Mary as she was delivering the baby. There was no angels singing outside of the stable as they welcomed the child. It was just Mary and Joseph welcoming their child just like any other parent would welcome their child. But sir, I thought, to say there was no miracle, no unusual incident, well, in my opinion, nothing could be further from the truth. Because in that moment, when the Christ child was born, when God chose to become flesh and blood human, when the Messiah came to our world incarnate, well, the world had never seen a miracle like that before. The world had never seen such an unusual incident. And nothing would ever be the same. Everything was different. God chose to use the common and ordinary to do something extraordinary. He used a, a stable and a manger as a birthing suite and a crib he chose an unwed teenager and an, her uncertain fiancé to parent God incarnate. He chose dirty, unclean shepherds to be the welcoming committee of the King of Kings. From the moment that baby Jesus made his appearance, everything was different. It was different for Mary, who was a young teenager, was told that she would become pregnant by the Holy Spirit and give birth to the Son of God, who, though she was unmarried, would embrace the miracle of becoming a mother. In the face of judgment and gossip, of shame and scrutiny, she became the mother that baby Jesus needed, one who would love and care for him as a child, one who would encourage him in his ministry, one who would stay beside him until he breathed his last breath on the cross. And on this night, this holy, sacred evening, everything changed for her. Baby Jesus was born, and everything was different. It was different for Joseph who was devastated when he found out that his fiance Mary, was pregnant with a child that clearly wasn't his, who, though he was crushed by the news and, and the uncertainty of his future with Mary, and though he decided to end the engagement with her, which was no easy task in the ancient Jewish society, he chose to have faith. He chose to listen to an angel who explained the situation to him. He chose to stand by Mary's side despite all the gossiping and judgment that surely was cast down on him as well. He chose to be the earthly father to the Son of God. And there, in that stable, staring into the face of God as he lay in that manger, everything changed for Joseph. The holy child arrived, and everything was different. It was different for the shepherds, who were doing their duty, working the third shift out in the fields at night, who, though the rest of society considered them less than, were chosen to be the eyewitnesses to glory. They left behind their precious sheep, to go see the precious Lamb of God born into their midst. And while others never would have given them the time of day, God chose the shepherds not only to be some of the first to experience the glory of the Messiah, but also to be some of the first to declare the good news of the gospel, that the Messiah had come and that he was amazing. Everything was different. Just as God changed everything for Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, you too can experience this change. Because God comes into the mess and the muddle of our lives. 
He chose to come to us, to leave the glories of heaven behind, and instead to be born in a stable. And he did it for you. When baby Jesus made his appearance all of those years ago, it was an invitation for you. The same invitation that was given to those gathered around his manger is the same invitation that he offers to you for everything to be different. You see, Jesus offers us a new perspective, a different way to view the world than we do through human eyes. He offers us a different perspective, to use his perspective, to see the world as it is truly intended to be. He offers you a new way to see your life, to see it as a life of purpose and of intention, a life lived to make a difference and to make the world a better place. Jesus offers you new hope, new love, new joy, new peace, and not the kind that we try to fabricate on our own, not the kind that works for a little while but eventually fades away. But instead, he offers us true, lasting hope and love and joy and peace. These things that he offered to Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, and countless others, he offers to you so that you can experience what they did, a life changed, a life transformed. You see, God loves you too much to leave you unchanged. God loves you too much to not bring that transformation into your life that you so desperately need. It may not be easy, but I'm sure parenting the Messiah wasn't always easy for Mary and Joseph either. It may not be easy, but this transformation is worth it. Because Jesus' birth means that everything is different. That nothing is as it was. When he was born... A measurable shift happened. A change happened. And things would never be the same. And when we welcome the Christ child into our midst, we experience that same shift in our lives. When we open our heart to that little baby that was born all those years ago, we will never be the same. Everything will be different. Speaking of different... We read this evening the birth story according to the Gospel of Luke. But there's another Gospel that tells the story in a different way. A very different way, really. But it's still the same powerful story, reminding us of how different life is now that Jesus is here. I'd like to share a part of that scripture with you this evening. It comes from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 1 and following. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing that was made has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everything was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The darkness of this world cannot withstand the light of Christ. If you feel like you're walking in darkness, Jesus is here to shine light into your life. If you feel weary and worn, Jesus is here to give you comfort and peace. If you feel feel filled with joy and hope and contentment, 
that too is a gift from Jesus. Nothing can be the same once we've experienced Jesus. The Christ child is born. Everything is different. Merry Christmas to you. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Tonight we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. We celebrate the night that changed everything for us. For we no longer have to struggle under the weight of our sin. We have been given the greatest gift in the form of a tiny, precious child. The birth of this child changed everything. God is with us. Emmanuel. And so tonight, we happily light the Christ candle with joy in our hearts and welcome the Savior, the Messiah, into our midst. Every year at our Christmas Eve service, we engage in a holy moment. We take the light of the Christ candle and we pass it person to person and we see the sanctuary fill up with light. And we are reminded that the light of Christ is in us and that together we are a mighty force for good. This year, while you may not be gathered here in our worship center, you are still able to have the opportunity to see the light of Christ burning before you. And so we invite you at this time to find whatever candle you have handy and to light it as we sing Silent Night together.
You are the light of Christ. Go out into the world and shine as brightly as you can. And Merry Christmas. Thank you for worshiping with us. We hope you have a Merry Christmas. As a reminder, the next two Sundays, December 26th and January 2nd, we'll each have one in-person service at 10 a.m. We will look forward to you joining us for some of our upcoming events, which include the Chili Cook-Off, Choosing Star Words, the relaunch of small groups, and the retiring of the Greens. Please check out the Midweek Messenger for more details. Thank you, and have a Merry Christmas.